All right, everybody, Joffrey the Giant here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, our new dwelling place. We have been here for just over a week, and these are the things I have learned about Albuquerque and environs since arriving. So I expect to have uh, plenty of content uh, going forward about where we're living. Uh, just as in the old incarnation of the channel, I had a lot of stuff about the Carolinas and about my travels. There's going to be a lot of stuff uh, about New Mexico. This is all first impressions. Uh, some positive, some negative. We are really, really happy to be here. We found a great home with a great location and a great job. And God has really looked after us through this whole process, lining so many things up beautifully. So we are really glad to be here. I haven't counted what, how many of these things are positive, how many are negative. Uh, again, these are just first impressions. So just take it for what it's worth. It is what it is. It is so easy to get around. So easy to get around town. So the Sandia Mountains are off to the east. That's a little weird, thinking of mountains being off to the east, but whatever. And they loom over the whole town, and they're beautiful. So you always know which way is east. And everything is in a grid. Everything is so neatly laid out. They're like these super blocks. So once you learn the main, the main streets, which ones run east-west, which ones north-south... There's a section of town where it's all state names and they're alphabetical. It is so easy. And then you go into these big blocks that are kind of made up uh, by the big streets. And there, you know, there's little, sometimes uh, the lanes wander or curve or do weird things. But people just orient themselves. Oh, where do you live? Well, and then you give a corner, one of the big corners. And it's just super easy to get around. Traffic is light as long as you stay off the freeways and you don't try to go off to the west side over the over the Rio Grande because of uh, you know the bridges kind of create bottlenecks uh, but we li we are living in town and it's just been absolutely beautiful the freeways too are pretty good you know there's I40 and I25 and you know the intersection is called the big eye uh, but at a rush hour it can get a, a little rough uh, I did, did have spent some time driving you know, I was staying south of here and had to, had to be driving up but overall super super easy to get around town. As a newbie, I'm already finding myself to be feeling quite comfortable. So the next thing, and related to the first thing, is that there's so much convenience. Uh, we've lived and visited many different towns. These super blocks that end up being formed means that you have on, on four sides of, of of your home, and this is the case you know, with most most places in actually in town, uh, you've got streets with lots of things, barber shops, restaurants, stores, big stores and small stores, whatever it might be. Super super convenient, uh, just within striking range of us. Bookshops, restaurants, game stores, pharmacies, parks, everything super convenient and easy to get to. The funny thing is, though is that nobody walks. No one walks. Everyone drives. So we walked to the barber shop. Didn't see anyone walking. You know, we saw a few people walk to the park uh, one day, but uh, walk to the game shop. Nobody's walking. Go out at night. There's the occasional dog walker who has to walk the dog. But I mean, I imagine people are going to the places near where they live, but no one is walking. And that's a little weird, just given how convenient everything is and how many sidewalks there are. I mean, this area is perfectly designed. I say this area, I mean most of Albuquerque between the mountains and the river. Perfectly designed uh, for pedestrians. You know, kind of in a limited range, and uh, and nobody's walking. It's it's a little weird. Also, no one's using public transportation. I shouldn't say that. People use tra public transportation. I see people at the bus stops. Um, I've, I've heard Albuquerqueans say that the public transport here is, is, is bad. They just designed this new bus, sis, bus line that kind of, it's an express line, runs through the middle of the city, and it's supposed to use, they actually took out a car lane on either side in the middle of a big avenue, and I've seen this work in other towns. It, it doesn't work here. And I think... The bus drivers are refusing 
to drive in that lane, I think. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. No one waits at those stops. People wait on the stops in the, on the traffic side of the road. So I don't, I don't know if the city is failing to implement it, if the bus drivers are refusing to do it, if the passengers have refused to use those stops, and so the bus drivers have had to adjust. I don't know what's happening with it. I can tell you that that system works. It works great. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's how the system is in, in, in my family's town in Brazil, in Belo Horizonte. I and mean, I've seen it in other towns as well. And it, it works fabulously. And nobody, nobody's using it. It, may, it makes me crazy when I see these empty stops. So, yeah, that's, that's another weird thing. Thirst. I mean, I know this is kind of a desert thing. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I used to visit Tucson with frequency, and I never felt this way. So maybe it's the combination of how dry it is with the altitude, because, man, it, it is high here. And you definitely notice the altitude. It's as high as Denver here in Albuquerque. Uh, I have never been so constantly thirsty in my life. I'm always drinking water, and I'm not dehydrated. I'm just thirsty. Uh, I don't know if my body's going to adjust what the deal is, but, ugh, thirst. Constant, unremitting thirst. One thing that I'm super excited about, and my wife maybe a little less, the spice levels are higher here. And uh, so we, 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 we lived in the Bible Belt in the south. Um, there's a little more spice there than you think there might be. But I absolutely love spice. Uh, we both spent a lot of time in Florida. My wife's from Florida, so she's used to, used to some spice. Um, I haven't had anything super spicy here. What's cool is that the regular levels of spice are a kick above what you might be used to. Um, so, like, for example, I visited town uh, a few weeks ago getting ready for the move. I went out to lunch with somebody, and the salsa and chips came out. And they didn't, even just, they didn't even ask us. They just brought us salsa and chips. And the regular salsa was definitely what others would consider spicy. And it was just the normal salsa. So I've, I've definitely noticed that in other circumstances as well, where it's just, just a slightly higher kick uh, in everything. And I, I really like that. I haven't had anything extreme, just, you know, spice and a lot of things. And associated with that is, is the question that I've been asked so many times, which is red or green chili. So I guess I don't even know where Hatch Valley is, but there's a valley somewhere in New Mexico where they grow a bunch of chili peppers, Hatch Valley peppers. You got to have them green or red. And you have to identify as either a red or a green chili person. And there's chili, especially green chili in absolutely everything. I am a green chili man. I've, I've made that discovery. I mean, McDonald's, Wendy's, all these national chains, they put green chili on their burgers because, I mean, it's just, it's just a, a universal thing. Went to church, dude rolled in with, like, this green chili stew, which was not chili like you're thinking of chili, um, and it was fabulous and delicious. It's good. It's really, really, really good. I am wondering if I'm going to get a little sick of it um, well, just because it's always there, always there, but it is very, very delicious. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, you, you're going to have to, if you, if you come to Albuquerque, you're going to have to become a red or green person or Christmas. Christmas is how they identify the mix of the two. Customer service here is wonky from our perspective. Uh, several people, Albuquerqueans, told us that this is the land of manana. I don't know about that, because I moved here from the south, and everything in the south is slow. But what I have noticed is that there's less belief in the creed that the customer is always right. Uh, so we've had a few episodes where, and I think we're going to have to make the adjustment. And so first of all, Westerners are more independent-minded, so you know, and they're doing their thing. So if their thing is working at Walmart, they're doing their thing. You do your thing. Your thing is buying things at Walmart, and we're gonna do. I'm gonna do my thing, which is you know, working at Walmart. So you know, maybe a little less congeniality and conviviality uh, in customer service. You know, that's fine. But what has happened to us a few times? You know, when you're moving. Um, you're all constantly faced with these new situations. So maybe you take a wrong step, you move the wrong way, you make the wrong choice, you ask a stupid question. And uh, I can guarantee you that if that had happened in the South, people would have had, they would have been very much kinder. Okay. Uh, I've gotten a couple of like blank stares when I've apologized for something. Oh, uh, sorry about that. And then the person serving me just looked at me. 
which is already extremely rude. But I've actually had, so my wife has had a couple people say something to her. You know, like actually just be kind of rude. But like not Yankee rude, just like I don't care rude. I don't care, but I care enough to say something. Really weird, um, you know, from our perspective. I think the key, the way we're going to have to adjust to this, is to stop apologizing. Because in the South, you apologize um, just as an acknowledgement that, oops, I made a mistake. And the other person uh, is, is very accepting of that and very generous. You know, this is part of the culture. You apologize and they say, oh, that's absolutely no problem, sweetheart. Um, and, then, you know, and then you move on. I think here the key is going to have to be being unapologetic about our mistakes or ignorance. I think that will resolve the issue. I don't know. But customer service has definitely been um, an adjustment. My wife wanted me to mention that roses grow absolutely beautifully here. And I, I, I've got to say, like, you know, I, 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 several people commented that this place is very, very brown. And I guess in a way it is, but it's also very green and very yellow. I mean, I guess yellow is a lot like brown, but I don't know. It's, it's really pretty here. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to more flowers blooming as, as we come into spring. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, you see more gnarled things, more twisted things as life tries to, you know, do what it does with a little less water. But yeah, it's actually really gorgeous here. And I'm actually looking forward to showing you guys some of the gorgeousness in the uh, succeeding weeks. Guards everywhere. Okay. And my wife grew up in West Palm Beach. Uh, so South Florida, lots of crime in South Florida. But you don't see armed security guards in Walgreens, for example. So and this feels a lot more like our experiences in Latin America from that perspective. You know, in, in, you know, if you're in Latin America, pretty much regardless of the country, you go to the shopping mall, you go to the drugstore, you go wherever, there's a security guard, and many times they're armed. That's definitely the case here. That's what we've been running into. And it's a little weird. Uh, it, it, it creates a sense of dislocation. You know, what... what what, what, what country are we in? Just because we've had these experiences in other countries, um, it's, it's a little jarring to see armed security in a Walgreens. I'm sure there are other parts of the country where this happens, but like I said, we've lived in high crime areas before and uh, not seen this. So it's, that's, that's uh, I guess, an adjustment as well. And it's not, it's not just the presence of the security guards. It's, it's, it's what you, you, you kind of wonder what else what, what about the environment is creating this? I mean, is it just that people want to see this so they feel safer, or is there an actual need, um, especially for the armed presence? So that's, a, that's, a, that's going to, I guess, be an adjustment. And uh, it, it definitely feeds into the, into the crime thing, like a lot of people. It was difficult to talk to people about Albuquerque with some objectivity because everyone talks about the crime, and I know that crime rates are high, particularly for certain types of crimes, and I know the intersection of I-25 and I-40 and relatively near the, the border with Mexico, okay, all that. Um, yeah, so, you know, it makes you kind of think about the whole environment, and, um, you know, we don't really have a handle on it yet, so that's, that's going to be interesting, and I'm sure I'll have more to say that, say about that. Finally, uh, have you ever been to Tampa Bay? Tampa Bay is weird. Tampa is weird, I should say. Why did I say Tampa Bay? It's like I've never even lived in Florida. The city of Tampa. It's weird because you can tell that it grew up in the 50s and 60s and everything was built then. Uh, well, pretty much between the mountains and the river here, that's what it feels like. Um, it's kind of like stepping back in time outside of Albuquerque it's sort of like stepping back into in time like 200 years ago and it's super super cool and interesting and well yeah just absolutely fascinating uh I don't think it's quite as cool and interesting that all the houses look like they were built in the 50s and 60s um you know I've already talked about all the awesome stuff with the way the city is laid out and all that so I suppose it's good that the city grew up all at once and they were able to plan all that and they did a great job with the planning. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like a, a going back in time 
is this the 1960s again thing happening here? So those are my first impressions, our first impressions. Uh, so I'm going to actually go get changed, get ready for a, a rugby match uh, with a local club. And we're going to set about assimilating ourselves into this bizarre and wonderful place. Uh, I mean, I'm looking out of the mountains right now from my place in the middle of town and really, really happy about our situation. So I look forward to talking to you guys more about Albuquerque and, of course, all the usual stuff that I'll continue to do, theology, cultural stuff on the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave your like, subscribe, the peace of Christ be upon you.